Hey, North Student Ministry, uh, welcome back to week three in our study, uh, After God's Own Heart. And we're going to continue to look at placing God first in our lives. God is to have first place in every aspect of our life. Now, we occupy our time and attention with many different things, but God should take uh, all of our time and all of our attention if we're putting him first and prioritizing him in our life. And we're going to look into that today. Uh, but before we get to that, here's our weekly challenge for you to submit by text or email to me. What is the one thing that takes the most time in you getting ready for school every morning? Don't include waking up. If you have trouble waking up, you can't answer that. But what is the thing in the morning as you get ready for school that takes the most time? Text that to me. Email that to me right here. Uh, a leader can help you with that address. And everyone who submits this week uh, an answer will get a prize when we come together in our first um, uh, first of the month meeting in November, coming up here in just a few weeks. So submit your And we will uh, pause the video right now, have someone in your group read that, and then restart it, and we'll continue. God is to have first place in every aspect of life. More often than not, though, uh, we know exactly where we are going, right? We've got a destination we're going to, uh, and we tend to go to places that we know really, really well, places that we frequent. Maybe Walmart, for me, Menards. Maybe you go to Culver's, right? You know how to get there. You know what's inside and exactly what you want. This principle, knowing where we are going, certainly applies not only to our lives, but for eternity. Uh, many people are careful to make sure they know how to navigate their lives right now, but they give little thought for where they're going for eternity. Thankfully, David, the author here of Psalm 16, knew about the path of life, and he shared it with us in the scripture that we just got done reading. David understood that the path of life is God himself. And through his word, God's word, God guides his people in ways that not only honor him, but lead to a life of blessing. Uh, in another psalm, David said this, I rejoice in the way revealed by your decrees as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and think about your ways. God's way is not merely one of the ways to choose from in life. It's more than that. God's way is the only way which leads to abundant joy and eternal pleasures. Abundant joy, this refers to God's giving us joy right now in the present life, even if life is difficult, uh, even if we get a cold, even if our house burns down, God is able to give us abundant joy now if we follow after him. And eternal pleasures, following God, leads to blessings now and, more importantly, in the future, in heaven, for all of eternal life, if we follow after his ways. Far too many people today believe they will make it into heaven uh, because they're really, really good, because they've followed the Ten Commandments. Now, remember those? We talked about those in the very first week. We went to Exodus chapter 20, and we must understand that the Ten Commandments were never given as an entry point into eternity. And while it's true that God expects us as his people to obey his commands, the ultimate purpose of the law, the Ten Commandments, was to show that we can't keep the law. It's impossible for us to do it. In other words, the law, the Ten Commandments, reveals that we needed a Savior. We need Jesus. Jesus is the only one to ever have fulfilled the law, perfectly obeying God's commands. And he is our Savior when we trust in him. In fact, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, Jesus doesn't just know the way According to this scripture that I just read in John 14, 6, Jesus is the way. 
And God's word consistently points to that message from the Old Testament all the way through to the New Testament. Jesus is the way to God the Father and to an eternity with God the Father. Following Christ, who obeyed the law perfectly, the commands perfectly, means uh, not obeying in an effort to earn salvation. I don't continue to obey to earn my salvation because I can't do that. It's only through faith in Jesus. But I obey as an expression of love, an expression of honor to God, my Heavenly Father. Jesus honored God above all else. And to follow Christ, follow after Jesus, means to place God first in every area of my life. God is to have first place in every aspect of life. Because God is holy, he is altogether separate from and infinitely above people who are sinful. And he, God alone, deserves our reverence and our obedience. Jesus honored God above all else. And to follow Christ means to place God first in our lives. God is to have first place in every aspect of life. Well, enjoy your small group discussion tonight and prayer time, and I will see you uh, next time right here at North Student Ministry where you belong, you are needed, and you are loved.